Do you ever feel like you're flapping your wings but going nowhere in your work? It's a feeling of no progress or no real progress. The feeling of not making progress can come up when doing the work of Byron Katie as it can in any other kind of situation. So what do you do when this happens to you? Let's say you're working on a big issue for yourself. Maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's money, maybe it's some big thing that just keeps getting you again and again and again, and you just feel like you're not making any progress with it. You know, of course, that the work is a process and it's not just like, it's not magic or something. It takes time and especially with some bigger things, it can be an ongoing thing. I know I've done the work for years on some issues and I've watched slowly it getting better, but it wasn't like just one shot and I was done with it. But sometimes you feel like you're reaching the limits of your patience, even when you know this. What can you do when this happens to you? The first thing to do is to stop. If I feel stressed, even about doing the work, it means that something isn't working for me and I need to stop and check it out. My tendency, of course, is to keep on going and going and pushing forward and trying to make things happen. I think a lot of us have that kind of thing, um, whether not necessarily with doing the work, but with whatever it is that we're trying to do. Like that idea of forcing or pushing is common in, in, in all of us. But that doesn't work very well when doing the work of Byron Katie. Um, the work is about questioning stressful thoughts and seeing if any of them happen to unravel. And you can't force that. Stressful thoughts let go on their own, or they don't. Um, but all I can do is open the invitation for this. And this takes a very gentle hold. Sometimes I make the analogy of like, if, you're, if you have a bunch of string that's knotted up and you start pulling hard on that string, it just makes it tighter and tighter or not. It's actually harder to get it, get it undone. But if you hold it very loosely and just kind of pull loosely here and there, then oftentimes you can unravel the knot and it, it is not a problem anymore. So when I'm doing the work of Byron Katie, if I push in any way to get results, then the whole system kind of backfires. Um, stressful thoughts are kind of like two-year-old kids who are actually in a position of power. Like imagine a two-year-old kid, but then imagine that they actually were in power, <laughs> like they were the king or something. Um, they're not going to relinquish that power just because I tell them to. That's just not gonna happen. Um, so they have to be invited. They have to be honored. Like you would honor a king, you know? It's a two-year-old king, but it's still a king. So they have to be invited, have to be honored, that they have to be listened to. And then they have to be given a choice and, and feel like they're in control somehow uh, to discover why it is that letting go of something would be in their best interest. And then uh, if they like what they see, they might let go. That's the way I like to approach doing the work. It's, it's, it's up to that little tantruming part of me that holds the knot of stress in me I'm asking it to do this work, to ask these questions, to find these answers, and to see what it, what it sees. But if I get start getting impatient with this process, because part of me knows this should not be a problem, and I should be over it, and I, all that, if I start getting impatient, then um, it, it doesn't work so well. And so what I need to do is actually stop for a moment, because pushing is not going to get me anywhere. The value of, of a break. Um, if the big topic I'm working on and getting nowhere with is causing me frustration, one simple solution is to take a break from that topic for a while. You know, you might take a break for a good while, for a few months or something, or longer. Um, and I like to vary my topics anyway. If I keep working the same topic over and over and over, it, it can get, um, it can get boring and it can end up feeling like I'm, I'm pushing again because I'm trying to get this one done and then I'll move on to the next one. But I actually love to just do a little of this and a little of that. And sometimes switching to a less charged topic can give me the feeling of making progress again. 
Ironically, insights gained doing some other unrelated work often cross-pollinate and inform my other work that sits dormant. So I've had very cool insights and breakthroughs when I've actually switched to other topics because all topics are actually related to each other. So I've switched over to something that seems like not important. I've left my big topic over here, put it on the side and started working on something else. And here I am working some tiny little issue over here and an insight comes that affects this bigger issue. So they're all connected. The real cause of impatience. So taking a break in action, um, taking a break is an action that takes the pressure away from pushing uh, and pushing to break through with an issue. But a shift in how I see my work on this issue can be equally valuable in reducing my impatience. And what I mean by that is that impatience comes from like not getting what I want, like lack of fulfillment, slow desire, a slow fulfillment of desire. And if I feel impatience when doing my work on any topic, I look for the hidden desire in myself. Like, what is it that I'm wanting? What is it that uh, I think I need here? Why am I so desperate to fix this problem? That's where the push is coming from. And if I can identify that and question that, then the push inside of me may start to reduce and I may have a little more space for actually doing this work. So answering questions like this will reveal motives um, that I have for doing the work. For example, if I'm doing the work on money, then my motives might be, my motives for doing the work on money might be, I want to be free of money stress. So like, that's my, that's my big goal, right? I want to be peaceful even when money is low. That's my, that's my goal. I want to be like someone who I know who doesn't stress about money. Or I want to get over the stress of money so I can make more money. That might be my hidden goal there. I want to get over the stress of money so I can actually make more money. Okay. Or I want my money work to be over. These are all motives. They're motives for doing the work on money. And you may have motives for doing the work on a relationship, on doing the work on any other kind of subject. When you identify some of these motives and question some of these motives, then it can take the pressure off and can reduce the feeling of impatience. So these are wants that make me push myself to quote unquote break through and find insights from my work. <clears throat> these thoughts cause impatience in me. And when I do the work um, on them, then the impatience tends to diminish. So I like to do that from time to time. Just notice what my thoughts are, why I'm doing the work, what is my motive for doing the work, question them and find a more enjoyable way of doing the work with a whole lot less pressure. And I often find it ends up being actually more effective because I'm not pulling the knot. I'm not trying to make it work. I am holding it more loosely and that makes a big difference.